We're finally making some progress in the craft room. Uh, more shelves to go up. And lots of lovely items up on the shelves. My sewing, candle making, and lots of things all organised. Knitting pattern books. We still have all of this. But it's getting sorted slowly. Good morning and welcome to my channel. Um, for those who do not know, my name is Michelle um, and I live on the northwest coast of Tasmania with a little island at the bottom of Australia. Um, today I'm bringing you a podcast style video um, about some knitting projects and whips and things I'll be doing in the future. Also some natural dyeing and a little bit of progress on my craft room yay um so let's get comfortable i'm sorry the lighting's a little bit odd in here um but it's much better than the computer room we'll work on that as i get everything organized um <coughs> so let's get started um today now it's a warm spring day so i didn't wear my um my finished objects because it's a little bit warm now but I have been working on some capelets for Cape Timber. Uh, let me find my little bits of paperwork here so I don't forget what I'm talking about. So, these capelets are for the Shannon Makes Cape Timber Make Along. Um, and she's joined up with Evie, who is a wonderful spinner. Um, Gillian Eve on YouTube. So first up I finished the little gathering capelet from my Nat Outlander knitting book. It's quite cute. I ended up adding a little wooden button that I had in my stash but I couldn't find at first. Um, it's just a very small shoulder cover. Um, there's the little handmade wooden button. Still has its bark and everything. Um, just a small shoulder cover. I did make a couple of little boo-boos. I do need to tighten up the um, button thread. It seems to have slipped through, but never mind. Um, and I used... I knew I'd do this. Um, all to be wild in earthy. Um, and it's a, uh, here I go, <laughs> not very organised, I thought I was, but apparently not, um, nope, but anyway, it's called Wool to be Wild, uh, it's just a spotlight brand of wool, it's, um, partly wool, partly acrylic, so that just comes down to in a bit of a V at the back. I did make a boo-boo here and for some reason we have a buttonhole in the middle of the back. But I'll just pop a few stitches in there. Ah oh dear, I've never really knitted garments as such. So this was kind of an interesting knit. But it was fairly simple. Um, the pattern was slightly, slightly confusing I'll say. But it's got the nice seed stitch collar and then into the um, stockinette stocking stitch and a seed stitch bottom band so that's that one I had tons of that wool left over so I also did the outlander capelet um, I haven't finished weaving in the ends for all um, <laughs> I have this all in a, all in a kerfuffle. Um, you wear it sort of across the shoulder and then pin it kind of like so. Um, so same yarn and I will put up a couple of photos at the end of me wearing this and the other one. So that's knitting like a rib 
two knit two pearl rib stitch in a long length and then you wear it kind of on the diagonal. You'd also make a couple of boo-boos on that, one in a very prominent position um, and I will have to add a brooch or something to cover that up because it's very noticeable. But anyway, never mind. <laughs> it's all, um, look, the more you knit, the better you get, I hope. Um, I haven't knit in quite a long time. Um, you know, I've, I've knit since I was a little girl, but I had quite a big break in my adult years, bringing up six children. Um, anyone would think I would knit clothes for them, but I did for the first couple, but after that I had no time. No time at all. Um, so I've got back into knitting in the last few years and I'm slowly get, getting a little bit better. Uh, what else have we got? Those were my two finished objects. Oh, actually, hang on, I think I do have something else. I do, I do. Um, well, they're kind of finished objects. They're still damp. Um, I attended a wet felting class a few days ago um, at the Live Well Centre in Wynyard. Um, now the Live Well Centre and Farm at Forward have lots of great little workshops going in Wynyard and Somerset and surrounds. Um, so on this day I attended a little wet felting class and we made this lovely piece of fabric. So it's 100% merino and the little white lines are silk. So I'm quite pleased with that and make a nice little wall hanging. Or you could frame it or put it in a, um, put a bunch of pieces together and make a bag or clothing or something. And that's quite, quite nice. I have done a little bit of felting in the past and I don't think it was merino because it was very, very time consuming. Um, so that's the little flat felt piece, kind of like a little, little sun, sunset scene. Uh, and we also made a bowl, so I ended up deciding I like mine this way. Um, the colours aren't quite coming up great on here, but it's kind of a uh, orange-brown little, little bowl, and all of those colours are silk. Now some of my silk didn't, didn't felt in. Mine will have a couple of little bumps. It's quite an interesting way um, that you do this. You make it flat and you cover a little round piece of plastic with one one layer of felt. Sorry, that's probably annoying. <laughs> um, and then you flip it over and cover the other side and felt them together. And then you cut a little tiny circle in the middle and pull the plastic out and then you rub around the edges to to felt the edges of the hole. So that's that little one. Um, no idea what I'm going to use it for. I might make a little felted mouse or something to live in there. But I thought it was quite cute. Okay, so that's it for the finished objects. Um, I have been very busy on the needles, so I knit both capelets in September for Cape Timber. Um, I also joined the other day another little, um, I think I've left it behind, oh no, here we go, another little knit along called Shall We Shawl by the channel We Grow Wild. And for that I'm knitting the Loving Embrace Shawl by, by Drops. Um, and I'm knitting this in a Motivera brand wool called Mega Tweed. Now I'm not sure of the colour, like the actual name of the wool, because I got it in one of those, you know, the spotlight, well you might if you're Australian, the spotlight grab bags, which don't actually tell you what, what it is. So it's this lovely squishy, thick, warm, wrong time of the year for that, but anyway, warm fabric. I'm knitting a triangular shawl, has the lovely little 
detail around the edges which don't really show up perfectly on this wall but I know they're there um, so I actually bought this grab bag of wool for six dollars and I've got this much left and quite a quite a decent sized shawl so far the pattern said to just go to 50 centimeters but I just decided to use the whole a whole lot of the balls and I have two more grab bags of that as well so as I said that's for shall we shawl if you'd like to join that um, hashtag shall we shawl on Instagram there's a lovely young girl from Italy who has the podcast we grow wild um, <clears throat> oh sorry also another work in progress Are these little bunnies now I have one bunny put together and she's all in her outfit she's a little bit wonky but she's sweet she has a pretty little dress um, and a scarf and a beanie at the moment um, I need to make two of these for my granddaughters isn't she sweet now she's knit flat and you stitch her all together which is how I like to knit I'm not big on this whole knitting in the round yet not confident enough I've tried a couple of times and then we also have a little pair of short overalls um, I'm doing the boys and the girls clothes so the girls can choose whether their bunny is a girl or a boy at the time um, there are I have a cardigan half done which is all in lots of pieces so I didn't bring that out um, and there's also a pattern for a bear which is pretty much the bunny pattern with shorter ears so they're going to be popped in a little case for Christmas hopefully I've got a few months left to finish them up um, and I hope the girls will like dressing their bunnies and bears <laughs> um, okay what else do we have so another make along that I joined was with Yana from Finnish Knitting Stories and if you've seen my previous videos you've probably seen a little bit about this and she's hosting the Happy Scrappy Blanket Mail and that's the um, that's the hashtag Happy Scrappy Blanket Mail I'll add these in the um, in the description notes um, so what I'm doing there is like a lot of people um, I saw the Battenberg blanket and fell in love um, now I haven't crocheted for a long 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 time but I've been going to a knitting group and the love one of the lovely ladies there gave me a little bit of a little bit of a um, brush up on on granny squares so I've been furiously um, crocheting granny squares in all sorts of colors these are all natural dyed yarn by me um, this one I think is tea and avocado um, this one's probably pepperberry the colors aren't showing up extremely well but you get the idea they're all mostly variegated um, so that's full of the squares um, and I'll show you some of the um, skeins that are waiting to be um, taped up so this one is Kamala it's a quite an interesting interesting tone of pink uh, it's a little bit darker than what it shows up here um, I just have these lovely variegated lines of of pink I don't know if you can see that very well um, and so far I've only tried crocheting with these um, depending how much I have left I may knit some up and see how they how they go this one I solar dyed on the windowsill during winter for two months um, and it came out quite nicely so I have loads and loads of these I won't show you everyone I'll just show you a few favorites 
Um, I did go through them in another video recently. So this one you should be able to see. This one is cochineal. Um, it's coming up a little bit orange in this light, but it's a real, really deep, deep red, and it has variegations because I, I twisted them up and popped them tightly into jars, so only parts of them saw the colour, which I liked for this for this project. So that's the bright red of the cochineal. Um, that was done on the windowsill in the solar die. Then with the leftover I popped another skein in and steamed it on the um, on the cooktop and got this lovely, it's like a very deep salmon pink. So that's the two two shades from the cochineal. Um, now in here somewhere as well This is another shade made from cochineal and logwood. That's a, it's a nice, it's very similar to the pink of my jacket, even though it's not showing up that well. Um, it has lots of l different tones throughout it. So, nice purpley, purpley pink. Kind of like a, a lilac, I'd say. Um, then of course we have the logwood. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think this must be it. We have the logwood, which I did on the windowsill. Um, and then this is the, the one I did after in the pot. I really wish the colours would show up better. Lot brighter than this in real life, but never mind. That's the beauty of um, natural dyes; they don't tend to like to show up. Um, we've got some beautiful yellows, shades of yellow and peach. Some of these I may still over dye again because they're very similar. Use things like avocados and acorns, and this one was eucalyptus, which again is not showing up very well. So, anyway, I have been busy, busy, busy dyeing those up. Um, in the bottom of here, yeah, some that I've crocheted together. There's the logwood. I'm really going to have to do something with this lighting. This was a um, well-used um, lichen. Um, I used that quite a few times. This one's very pretty and almost as bright as originally. That one is Fustic. And this one is my favourite, and I hope it shows up. This one was a bouquet of flowers I bought around Mother's Day, and it had a, I'm not sure if it was chrysanthemums or dahlias. And that came out all of these beautiful colours, pinky peaches and greens. I think that was eucalyptus leaves or something. And I love that one. Anyway, enough about that. Now I have the huge task of seaming them all up. Well, once I finish making lots and lots and lots of um, squares. Uh, the wool I've used for that is a, a fairly inexpensive commercial brand. It is Four Seasons Pure Wool 8 Ply. 100% Australian wool, it tells you. It must be wool or it wouldn't die as well as it does. I'm not sure which type of wool. Um, and they're in the 50 gram balls. They had a big sale recently and they were $3 per ball. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not extremely rich. So they will do for now. Um, I'd love to work with some, some better wools, which I do. I do hand spin. Sorry. 
Um, but I haven't done much recently. The last thing I did was some alpaca for a client, which I can't say I enjoyed. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Okay. So I told you about the finished knitting stories, scrappy blanket now. I told you about Shannon makes Kate Kimber. I told you about Shall We Shawl. Um, I think those, that was that. Oh, I, I noticed another new, another channel yesterday um, called 50 Fabulous Strick. Now it's a Danish lady, she speaks English, so she does a podcast in English and Danish. And she's doing a knit -a thon on the 15th of October where you can knit for 24 hours straight if you wish, or just as much as you can and catch up. They're doing lots of live um, live knit -a thons So that's hashtag knit -a thon 2022. I might join that if I if I get a chance. Um I have lots of things on my project to do list. Um, I haven't quite finished the um, scarf I was knitting for charity. Almost, almost there. Um, so that's that. Now, what I would like to start, and I may have talked about these before, I am not certain. Um, first up, but it's a little bit, a little bit scary, as a, a couple of these. I would like to try the Scotch broom top. It has this really interesting pattern along along the chest, um, and it is really interesting. Um, it's from Wool and Pine. You you can find this pattern on uh, Ravelry. Uh, it's kind of just a square construction. With lovely, lovely sort of a net. It's meant to look like a broom um, lace work. Uh, so I actually saw a few podcasters make this. Some have made it. It's quite a cropped top, but you can add a little bit to the bottom. I'll probably um, add about ten centimeters longer because I'm not, I'm not that into cropping. I have quite large ladies and um, we don't want them popping at the bottom. <laughs> it's not a problem everyone has. Um, and I've seen mostly people are knitting it in like cotton or linen. So I actually found a couple more grab bags and I'd love some thoughts. I've got a bag with this lovely cotton cotton yarn and it has it's kind of a variegated lavender grey. It's really pretty. Uh, there are only two balls, but I think they're quite large balls. I think they would be enough to um, to knit up that top. I have those. And then completely out of my comfort zone, but equally lovely, are these... Um, Buttons. Now there's four of these. I think they're 100 grams each, and they are in the brightest neon green and blue, um, with a bit of white in the centre. Um, so I'm. I think the top would look lovely in these colours, but would I wear it? Is my is my problem. Um, and as my family aren't really into knitwear, it would kind of be a waste if I knitted in this. I'm not sure. What do you think? What do you think? The neon or the lavender? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I am a woman in my 50s, which, you know, that doesn't mean you can't wear bright colours, but it's not something I'm comfortable in wearing. I actually found this one first and then I came across this. Now I like this. We shall see. Let me know what you think. <clears throat> now also another very exciting um, knit, -a knit along. 
and I'm still waiting on my wool. I ordered a kit from from the UK. Um, last I knew it was in Melbourne, so it's getting close. It's getting close, but this starts on the 6th of October. So we don't have long. And that is the West Knits Twists and Turns Mystery Shawl. So every week you get a, um, a clue to start knitting one of Stephen West's fabulous shawls. Um, all we get for now is the details of what we need, how much wool, what needles, etc. Um, one of the one of the requirements is cable needles. I don't think I've ever I'm a little bit frightened, but I've ordered a Holst Garn wool kit, um, which is a I think it was from Denmark, a Danish. Danish yarn so that will be really interesting it's in neutral tones they didn't have a lot left and it was one of the cheaper kits anyway so that's all I could afford to be honest um so I'm really looking forward to starting this but I'm also very nervous so if you check out um West Knits on YouTube you'll see some of the other shawls that they've created over the years um so that uh, hopefully won't be too technical for me, but I will give it a shot. Who else is planning to join the um the West Knits shawl? Um mystery shawl. And do you ever join in on mystery knit alongs? I have never joined a mystery one before, so this will be my first. <clears throat> okay, so another couple of pieces that I, I would like to try out. And this one I had inspiration from y Yana from Knitting, Finnish Knitting Story, sorry. Gee, the light's getting a bit yellow in here now. But anyway, and that is a girl's best friend shawl. I really like the mustard and pink, but I would probably swap the grey for a cream. Uh, uh, anyway, so I might get that give that one a go a bit later on. I don't need too many shawls on the needles. I've got one almost finished. One I need to start soon. Scary stuff. Um, and then another another knit that um, Yana from Finnish knit, Knitting Stories inspired me to try. Is the globe. Why can it be in some of my hand spun? It's kind of a square construction. It has a bit of bit of lace work. Um, yeah, <sighs> all the things. So I'd like to give that a go. Maybe after Christmas. I don't think I'll get a chance before then. So that's, that's the construction. I hope you can see it. The light's starting to get a bit bright in here. Um, so I would really like to try some of my um, hand spun for that one. We'll see how we go with that. Um, anyway, so I think that's about it for today. Um, sorry if you can hear the trucks go by. It gets very busy here of a morning. Um, but uh, that's life. <laughs> that's life in the country when, you know, there's log trucks heading past and quarries up the road and things like that. Um, I'm very excited to get the craft room organised, as I said. So we have some um, shelves up. There's lots to do. Um, I gave up on painting the walls. The husband started this room almost 14 years ago. And I don't care about the walls anymore. I am just moving in. Moving in. I've been waiting too long. So up here you can see I have my sewing sewing shelves. Um, to the left of me I have some knitting books and some natural dye um, things, indigos and all sorts of things like that. I have candle making supplies over there. Um, I will be putting, we've got two more shelves to put up so they'll, they will probably hold mostly wool and um, spinning. 
be able to bring my spinning wheel out and do some videos of spinning and things. So that will be exciting. So I'll leave it there for now. Please, um, if you don't mind, um, subscribe to my channel uh, and click the little bell. And it will let you know of all our videos coming up. Sometimes my daughter pops in to say hello. She's, at, she's just gone to school this morning. Um, and please like the video and comment if you have in, anything to say. Um, even if it's just tips to make my channel a little bit better. I've been here for a couple of years. I don't, I don't load weekly, so I'm a little bit hit and miss. But uh, we don't have many subscribers yet. <laughs> but oh, you know, give me some tips if you'd like to see something. You know, if if to make it more interesting for everyone. Um, but I'll leave it here for now and I will add some photos to the end of this video of some of the things I've been working on and the shawls and some photo updates of, of the craft room. Okay, so thanks for watching and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye. Oh, very a bit dusty, Eddie. <laughs>